Hello, everybody. Today, we are going to be reading chapter eight that is called Bob. And when we left off yesterday, or last time you heard this, um, Livy had gone to town with her mom and her gram, and her sister, of course. And it was interesting because once she got to town, she couldn't really remember what she wanted to go buy and why she wanted to go buy it. So it's kind of weird. But then when she saw the black chess piece, it helped her remember Bob. So she knew like when she was in the candy store, I thought that part was interesting because she was like, why would I be buying licorice when I don't like licorice? So think about that. I have an idea of why. Mm -hmm. I'm glad she didn't accidentally give it away. So, um, so when she went into her pocket and she pulled out the things in her pocket, she saw the black pawn and the name came back in a flash, Bob. And I realized that I've forgotten all about him again. And then Sarah says, hey, you never told me about the chess piece. Is it your lucky charm or something? I stare at the pond and I finally get it. Something is wrong. So that was the end of chapter seven. Here's our chapter eight with the little feather. Bob. I learned a lot of things today on my adventure with Livy, but here's what I learned after she left. If you put a wet chicken suit in the clothes dryer, all the feathers will come off and the whole thing will shrink into a little ball. The car pulls up outside just as I've rescued the last feather from the lint trap. The tutu scratches at my legs as I climb the stairs with the whole mess in my arms. If I were Superman, I could have just used my heat laces to dry it off and it would be as good as new. I wait in the closet. Waiting in the closet is not so bad when you know somebody will soon be opening it. Plus, being in here is kind of relaxing. Like, I don't have to worry about anything other than what's inside my head. I like filling up my head. I flip the dictionary open to you. Now that I know where the light cord is, there'll be no stopping me. I'll get up to Unicorn before Livy swings open the door so wide the doorknob bangs into the opposite wall. That's going to leave a mark, I say, shutting the book. We can cross Unicorn off the list of things I might be. I could have told you that, she said. I hurry over to the bed to open the bag of clothes that is no doubt waiting there for me. There is no bag. I purse my lips at her and wait for an the explanation. So, you'll never guess what happened to me when I was in town, Libby says. Ooh, this better be good. I forgot about you. Only she sort of looks excited about that, which is more than just a little annoying. I forgot, she repeats again. I start to gnash my teeth, but my teeth are already kind of small and stubby. I put my hands on my hips instead. Why are you happy about forgetting again? She shakes her head. I'm not happy about the forgetting part, but now I think I understand why I forgot you the first time. I mean, I know I was really young, but let's face it, you're pretty memorable. Well, I have to agree there. I always thought I was pretty remarkable as far as mysterious creatures go. She begins to pace the room. When we left for dinner, I was thinking about you and the chicken house and the clothes you wanted. But by the time we got to town, I forgot all of it. My eyes widen, widened. I'm less annoyed now and more curious. All of it? She nods. I reach up and lay the back of my hand on Livy's forehead. Maybe you have a fever. She shakes her head. No, listen, it's not me. I think it's coming from you. You have a gift. I think you're magic. I stare at her. Oh, great. So my magic is about people not being able to remember me? What kind of stinky magical gift is that? It's not so bad, she insists. It protects you from strangers, right? I guess, 
but it makes you forget me too. It would, yes, but I have something that reminds me. She dives into her pocket and pulls her hand out triumphantly to reveal the chess piece. I'm trying to keep up. The chipped black pawn from the H7 square makes you remember me? Yep, I must have figured this out when I was little. Graham said I tried to take it home last time. When I hold it, I remember you. She lowers the pawn back onto the board so it can continue its job of protecting the king. It wobbles as she sets it down. We both reach out to steady it and our hands close on it at the same time. Our eyes meet in surprise. We've clutched this same pawn before between us. Back then we laughed and rolled around on the floor pretending to fight over it. But now we just stare at each other. This action, this coming together, is linked us somehow. Livy's right about the magic. For some reason, people forget about me when they get a certain distance away. But this pawn resists it. This means Livy didn't really forget about me when she left five years ago. Well, she did, but not on purpose because she didn't have the pawn. Knowing this makes a huge difference. We finally let go. See, I tell her, I was right about the pawns being powerful. Don't go getting a big head about it. She reaches into her pocket and pulls out a wrapped up caramel and a piece of black licorice. I grab for the licorice, my favorite candy. The lady at the store said, I used to get it all the time. I nod, chewing happily. Mm, you did. You bring it back every time we went to town. You tried it once and said it tasted like dirt. That sounds like me, Livy says, popping the caramel into her mouth. Where did you find the black chess pieces anyway? I ask as I savor my delicious treat. They were downstairs with a bunch of other stuff Gran put out to show me. Her voice is a bit slurpy because of the caramel. There was a green elephant too. And a uh, Rufus, I jump up. Grand found Rufus? Huh? Well, I'm not sure. I didn't ask him his name. Green and soft, about the size of my head. Long trunk. I start my nose and swing my arm out like a trunk. Sounds like the one, she says. I'm halfway out the door before she yanks me back. Hold on there, mister, she says. Oops, sorry. Will you get him for me? Now? Yes, please. I wait by the door, hopping up and down. Rufus, Rufus is back. I should probably act my age and not get excited about a stuffed animal. Then she walks in with a Rufus. I snatch him up from her arms and hug him tight and snip his head. He smells just the same, like the cake and outdoors. Libby half smiles and half rolls her eyes. I'm glad you have your stuffed animal back. I hold him out to her. Oh no, he's not mine. Rufus is yours. Mine? I don't think so. I've never been an elephant person. What a hurtful thing to say. I hug him again. But when you were soaking wet in the chicken house, you had him in your arms. She takes a step backwards in surprise. I did? And he was wet too. Rufus was wet? Livy steps over the window that looks out onto the yard. Her back is to me for a long time. When she turns around again, her eyes are wide. There's only one place in Grand's yard Rufus could have gotten wet. I think he fell in the well. Well. That would explain why she was, she was wet in the chicken coop. Hmm. Interesting. Next chapter is chapter nine. It makes me wonder how things maybe would have been different for Livy if she would have been able to take those chess pieces home and maybe even Rufus. I wonder if that would have helped her 
remember Bob if she had those things to remind her all that time. Hmm. Something to think about. I will see you next time for chapter nine. Have a great day.